Michael, tell us, tell us the story of the film. It originates with a play that Lois was in and that I saw, and sh I, we were both so excited about it, we thought it could translate into a movie. But the play is really using holograms and the idea of artificial intelligence to challenge our ideas of what it is to be human. Mm. And that sounds prefabricated, but I just thought of it. The author is, a, is not me, it's Jordan Harrison. I adapted his play, and he was thinking hard about this because he had a grandmother who was losing her memory, who had al Alzheimer's, and his parents provided her, they wrote a diary in a notebook where they were reciting facts about her life and trying to help her stay, hold on to her memory and her identity, essentially. Mm -hmm. And that became the basis of this play. And he had the imaginative leap of saying, what if a hologram could be providing companionship to someone who's losing their memory? Mm -hmm. What would that, how would that shake up the family dynamic? So John, you actually played the hologram. Your Lois's husband, husband, husband. deceased husband, um, come back in all your glory. So talk about that. Well, what it's like. uh, the, what the film does, I think, very elegantly and uh, very um, surprisingly emotionally is kind of jump around the timeline a lot. So we see uh, my character both as a real person with Lois's character back in the past. And then, and then we also visit both of these characters in the future where one of them has gone through the process of living for 40 years and the other is frozen in this moment and represented as a, as a three-dimensional um, hologram. Um, so it, it, what the film does, I think, again, very elegantly and beautifully is kind of play with these ideas of what, where do we stick? You know, what, wh what's the thing we think of when we think of a person or a memory or, um, you know, is, is there one place that, that that person lives in our memory as. And I think there is, you know, when you, when you think of your grandfather or grandmother or father or someone from your past, th th you, you remember a specific part of them. You don't necessarily remember the whole spectrum. Mm -hmm. And it's an interesting idea. And, and I think the film delivers on that. Um, uh, it's, 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 it's almost philosophical in its, in its sensibility, um, but I, I really do think it's, it rewards uh, the viewer for, for paying attention to the, the bigger thoughts. Lois, tell us about your character. And so this is, the, this is a way for you to hold on to yes. your husband? Or it's so much part of, as John was saying, it deals so much with memory and with the part that memory has in our life, the whole span of it, um, what humans are doing with their memories. And uh, yes, the the husband, the young well, younger I would just version. Ask, is, is this something you wish you had today? I mean, do I wish I had quite a lot oh of life? Oh my! You know, that's really hard. Where would I put him? I, I <laughs> 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 probably. I don't think I've been longing for one. But maybe if I gave it some thought, some more thought. I've thought about this play quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So Gina, who do you play in the film? My name is Tess, and uh, <laughs> these are my parents. Um, I love telling people that John Hamm is my dad. Yes. Because uh, yeah. they're like, huh? I said, it actually makes sense in the context of the movie. And I, I'm really against the idea in the beginning of, of her having a, a hologram of dad. <coughs> and I think part of it is, I so desperately want her love for myself that you know any any distraction from that is uh, um, doesn't seem great. But then, ultimately, I don't know how much we're giving away. Don't uh, give it all away. Don't give anything away. Anyway, <laughs> he things ultimately change. things change. Yes, <laughs> and uh, you know I I come to terms with it and uh, embrace it. I mean, this really this concept doesn't seem so far off. Um, we had a dinner last night where we were talking about actors being revived as holograms and um, of course we're already doing this on stage with you know Whitney Houston and uh, Michael Jackson so I see I suppose it's probably still expensive now and so you want to pick your shots but it's going to get less expensive over time to create holograms um, where are we are we moving this way as a society uh, sure uh, obviously you know like technology tends to only move in one direction it's not like they go oh this hologram idea was a great idea but eh, never mind they're going to keep doing it. And um, uh, you know, I did a movie a few years back called The Congress that dealt with digitizing an actress played by Robin Wright in that film, but, uh, and, and sort of like 
reusing her over and over again. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we just saw it in Star Wars with uh, Carrie Fisher, rest in peace, and uh, and Chris Plummer. You know, you you the it's it's there already. Does and that scare you at all? You don't you don't look thrilled. The look on your face doesn't say I'm thrilled about nothing this. Nothing scares me anymore. <laughs> you know, it's it is what it is. You have to kind of accept it for what it is, and 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 then utilize it. I mean, I think it's it's another expression of creativity, hopefully. But the, I, re I remain an optimist in those things. It so. deals more with humans than, uh, not only with holograms, a lot with humans. I yes. think this piece is very human. That's the that's where it, I think ultimately rests is does it resonate with humanity and does it resonate with a, a, a real living person because there always has to be a person at the end of it mm -hmm. until we create computers that can create computers and then we're well and truly fucked. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Then we become completely that. extraneous <laughs> to the <laughs> equation. <laughs>